we are back again and we are talking with Tendermint Timmy from Spark IBC, also Interchain Info. Timmy, what's up, man? What are we doing today? Uh, finally just had a moment of free time where you did too. So I think we were like, let's do this thing. Um, yeah, we've been making a lot of progress on stuff. So I'm now balancing time between like getting that stuff ready to launch and trying to hook up with people like you and Joe and other content creators and do stuff like this. So that's nice, what, that's what my nice. days have been like recently. <laughs> well, tell me, tell me, tell me about everything that you've been working on. What's been going on with Interchain Info? Yeah. So I guess there's like a little context for people who don't know. I've already launched a project earlier this year called Spark IBC, which it's a pretty small platform right now. It doesn't have a ton of use, but I definitely can see that changing and I plan on it. Um, it is a sort of launch pad slash charity thing, but its whole sort of uh, unique twist is that it focuses on chain agnostic and truly multi-chain efforts. So things that might not have a home chain, but that are deployed everywhere or off-chain efforts that support uh, you know various chains. Because I noticed it was really hard to get funding in this entire ecosystem when you do a multi-chain thing because people only want to fund you building on their chain um but once at, during building spark i kind of like and probably after it launched i was kind of thinking honestly like we could also just kind of take on the role in part of like a steward of the interchain like truly mm -hmm. the interchain not just a couple of them in it right mm -hmm. and so i think what Spark might eventually become is like a full registered company for sure, but that has various ventures, either that it totally manages and controls or that it works with other projects, community members for. And so I would say Interchain Info is like the first one of those. Interchain Info is Spark's first like big project. We're doing a funding campaign for it now. So if you want to contribute, um, sparkibc.zone is the URL. Um, and the, the homepage you'll be on right when you get there would be the donation to the campaign. You can scroll down and read all the info. But basically what Interchain Info is, um, and one reason I actually think it's like, it, it's a more difficult hill to climb, but I think it's mm. a match made in heaven that we're using Spark to fund it and that we're behind it because, <clears throat> ooh, awesome. Um, I wouldn't want something like this and i know i haven't actually explained what interchain info is but as a preface i don't think i'd want it to have like vc backing or yeah. kind of be funded in traditional ways because what it's aiming to be um there's a couple different aspects to the site but overall something kind of like wikipedia is for general knowledge but for the interchain mm -hmm. so one portion of our site is actually very much like wikipedia but the whole site you can sort of think of as fairly unbiased. Like we we will we do have certain measures in place and we'll do due diligence to protect from phishing cam phishing scams and uh, clearly malicious or spammy stuff. But for the most part, like this is not a platform where we come on and promote certain projects. This is somewhere that the average user can go with confidence to know that this is like a canonical all-in-one hub for exploring the interchain. Like if I'm new to right. Cosmos, all I have is some Atom in a private wallet. It is really hard to start that exploration. You have to make a Twitter account or lurk Reddit, or uh, if you want to go the hard route, like lurk through the weird world that is medium articles, where how do you even like find <laughs> new ones, right? You find yeah, I was gonna say, that's a journey. <laughs> Like, I'm curious, actually, for you, Tank, like, have you ever once found a blog or a write-up or something on Medium unless by browsing? Unless it was Medium? directly, yeah, no, unless it was directly pointed out to me via a Twitter, Twitter post or something. or something like that. Yeah, like, I, I've tried yeah. to journey down that route and find certain things of interest. And I, I even I can't, and I know where I'm going. And I, I exactly. Lost, but yeah. Right. Like you, you're, you have to be in the right Twitter circle or be following the right YouTube accounts or like, like, honestly, I would say the ones that are most helpful on the YouTube account front, ones like yours and Joe and a couple others are actually like mm -hmm. the smaller ones like Cedo. I love what crypto Cedo does. I actually, I know there's some controversy. I think he plays an important role in the ecosystem. He's a really good normie Same. magnet, but mm -hmm. it's not actually helpful for, um, 
comprehending what you're doing and feeling confident moving about the interchain. Um, right. So yeah, Interchain Info is a site that is sort of designed to, I guess, I guess the one thing I, I didn't touch on there at the intro that I usually do is we all love Cosmos. And if for some reason someone's watching this who's new to Cosmos, Cosmos is this really cool thing in Web3 where there are multiple different fully sovereign blockchains as different mm. as Ethereum is to Bitcoin that can all do their own thing and run in their own way, have their own stuff built on them, but that are have communication methods built in at a like a fundamental level in the tech. So these chains can work together, like put simply. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's what we all love about Cosmos. I think that's its biggest unique selling point is its modularity, sovereignty, decentralization, but it creates this thing that we call the fragmentation problem. Whereas an inherent, natural, totally understandable side effect of those benefits, it becomes so non-intuitive and non, not easy to navigate. And by navigate, I just mean find new projects, get involved in new communities, uh, even just like, you know, people who just buy Atom on Coinbase might not even know what map of zones or mint scan is. So they don't even yeah. know that there's like other chains in the cosmos, except for a couple of the big names, right? Mm -hmm. So I could go on forever, but that was a long sort of ramble. That's sort of the crux of what we're getting at. And I personally think like it is far more important than almost anything else in ensuring that cosmos gets mass adoption in the next bull run. Like I genuinely think, you know, if we get a super shiny, cool, polished new DeFi product that might bring in like a million new users suddenly if something's really cool about it but right. I wouldn't consider them sticky users they're one that's going to be here while the yield is good and while the tech is new and might drift elsewhere because they're unable to explore out from that one shiny new DeFi thing so mm -hmm. I like to imagine that interchain info is going to bring on the next 1 million sticky users to the cosmos that are actually here to stay. They know what they're doing. They know why the value is here and they don't have to just kind of be in that position. We've all been with crypto investing at some point where you're like, I think this stuff is cool, but I don't really know. I'm going to lose sleep over holding it because I just, you, you know, what's really a great example like of this, that. you know, what's a really great and it, it's, it's sad to admit this, but a really great example, uh, especially recently, uh, was with Terra community members and like the rest of the mm. Cosmos community, like before everything happened or whatnot, like wh while that transition after the aftermath, right? Like it was very, very apparent of how uh, we need something like Interchain Info and Spark IBC to really like create that bridge uh, so that people can cross over because they didn't even know what was really happening on on our side of the fence so even though we're in the same ecosystem and vice versa there were so many people here in the greater cosmos that had no idea about that neighborhood in the greater cosmos and it yeah. was just like yep. really <laughs> yep no and i was one of the relatively few people who was very much on the fence there or on both sides of the aisle there like i was both involved with luna with my personal finances as well as the communities and Twitter stuff. So I got this weird first hand look at what you're talking about where I'm like, mm -hmm. wait, you guys don't like realize you're in a greater ecosystem. Like there's more yeah. out there that's at your fingertips and built on the same tech. Like it was kind of eye opening. Yeah, it was shocking. Uh, with that being said, though, uh, with Interchain Info and Spark IBC, right now you have a campaign uh, for funding Interchain Info. Where is your work right now with Interchain Info? Oh, duh. Yes, thank you. So mm -hmm. right now we are we started beta testing at the beginning of this week. Um, and so we've had maybe 20, 30 people in there doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And just today, I th or no, uh, late yesterday, um, we got a new ingestion of content. So for the past couple months, one of the things I've been doing on the side is contacting projects, community members, et cetera, to have them do like a write-up or basically A, to put us on their radar and B, say, hey, your thing has a page on the Interchain Index. It's a portion mm -hmm. of our site that you can think about just like the Wikipedia for Cosmos. Um, would you want to submit a little write-up for it? So people have been doing that and we've been compiling that in, um, not directly on site because we don't have them submit it there. 
And so we just ingested the bulk of that um, last night or this morning. And so we're going to be letting in a few more beta testers who like weren't given the role at the beginning of the week to do another sort of wave of testing this week and get feedback. Um, okay. Outside of that, I'd say the two things I have my main focus on is already designing like a full website UI facelift. Um, functionally, it's going to be the exact same as what yours. Actually, you know what? Let me give you a peek tank. This will be fun for. Ooh, yeah. 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 Because I'm very proud of uh, this little, little bit here. Can I share it on, on, the, on, the, on the show? Yes. Yeah, that's okay, what I'm okay. thinking. I was going to say, cool. you're going to let me peek, but can I share it on the stream? <laughs> um, private chat. Should I do that in the restream? Uh, or just but, Discord? Yeah, you can send that. Yeah, sure. Either one. Either one. I'm looking out for it. Yeah. There we go. So, yeah. So, I'm working on a total uh, website reskin because, like, we don't have, you know, we don't have any funding until this happens. So I mm -hmm. did the UI design and I'm not a designer. I think it, it was kind of shoddy and could use some work. Um, I will point out what you're looking at is a design. So certain things are not reactive, like the fact you have to scroll down a little bit there. That'll sure, obviously sure, be yeah. fixed. Um, yeah, there's some cool working features. Like if you hover over the search bar, you'll see what it looks like when you type. Um, mm -hmm. the buttons are functional. There's like a footer that pops up if you scroll to the bottom. Um, but point being, so I've been focusing on a, a UI, UI overhaul because I think first impressions are everything. And if we want to kind of be this blue chip canonical, like go to hub, it has to look at that level. And like right now we, we just don't have money to hire an actual designer. So luckily right. I'm a little bit on the artistic side. I, I do video editing, so it definitely helps. Um, and I've just been like consuming UI design videos and reading articles and stuff. So we are very Learning much- Learning so as you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other thing that's been occupying most of my time is if you go back to the campaign, you'll see our funding targets mm -hmm. are fifty thousand and a hundred thousand dollars, and you can see we're at a hundred fifty nine right now. So, yeah. I would have liked to see a little bit more support initially than one hundred fifty nine, considering I've talked to over one hundred and fifty nine people who have voiced their support for this that <laughs> they donate. But, um, but it's also not super surprising. So the reason we have our target so high um, is because. This will be the first campaign, and it's a precedent that I would love to set, where both community pools and grant writing organizations can contribute mm -hmm. to a project through a Spark campaign. So one of the things that you listeners will probably see in the next couple of weeks is governance proposals on most of your favorite chains, where we're going to be asking for honestly a pretty meager sum. Like we're probably going to ask from ten thousand dollars from each chain, and yeah. 5,000 of that is going to go towards like a general contribution, like hopefully the chain see the value in what we're doing, their communities. The other 5,000 is going to be reserved exclusively for incentivizing content about that chain. So oh, wow. Secret okay. Network, Osmosis, whatever, they'll give us 10K, hopefully, if the community is on board. And 5,000 of that is going to go into a system. We haven't hammered out the details yet because we do want it to be kind of not gameable, but where people can come in and submit new index pages or articles or videos about secret network things or osmosis things, and they can get a tip in secret or osmosis that came from the community pool. So it's this really like, I think, pretty beautiful harmony of like they're A, supporting us in general and supporting something that should help everyone in the ecosystem. Um, but B, specifically making sure that their content is fleshed out and comprehensive. On the could could so I have a just just off hearing that right um, I have an idea it might be stupid but uh, for I guess I'm speaking more towards the protocols like say for osmosis for example right if you put up a proposal uh, for osmosis by the way I'm going to vote yes for that by the way um, I, I I just for me I think it's kind of like a no brainer right like you could uplink because they do have uh, educational content already that they produce uh on their social media platforms um uh i get this is just my humble opinion you know i don't think it gets as much exposure as they would like uh but to be able to maybe upload 
uh, some of that great content that they've produced themselves onto a, um, you know, a platform such as Interchain Info, uh, where, you know, it's going to be the hub, the one-stop shop for everything that's happening yep. within the greater cosmos. And, you know, especially <clears throat> for Osmosis being the DEX, uh, or, you know, I, I would say uh, uh, for the cosmos, I think like it would just kind of like make sense, like, right? Like fund it, uh, allow, allow a grant to just even simply say, hey, okay, great. So when you're done, let us upload all this content on your guys' page. Yep. So that way when people come visit you guys, they can get a better gist about how to use our platform. So like just for like, just as a retail uh, and, and cosmonaut that partakes within the Cosmos ecosystem, like, I think that's a no brainer for all of these protocols. Like it's secrets, very, very confusing. I know they have yeah. their own, um, content. If they could just, you know, they, they pass a, you know, it, and I think that is very small amount that you're asking for, but they pass yeah. a, a grant proposal right. like that. Boom. Load it on there. I think that's a win-win. But here's, here's the beautiful thing. On the one hand, 10,000 is very low and anyone who it's like turns their nose at that would be a little crazy, but mm -hmm. the beauty is there's enough chains that like that adds up on our end. Like if everyone's oh, yeah. pitching in, it becomes a substantial amount. Um, oh yeah. I guess like you hit the nail on the head though. And so I guess one extra thing or uh, some details I'll kind of add to the interchain info thing is so our site sort of for now, will have three main sections to it. A mm -hmm. dashboard, which is gonna is come here? later. Is this, We're not gonna is have that, that at this launch. Right here? Yeah, and you can okay. kind of see there, I know the image is kind of small, but like, Basically, it lets you pick and choose from modules like, let's say, Rango or Restake or Dexmos or Hubble tools and like pick the ones that you use and put them all in one place so you no longer have to open 30 different tabs to do everything. Yeah. And um, if you unminimize this image, actually, and scroll sure. down to the dashboard portion of this, it should be number three. There we go. You can see, I think there's going to be an immense amount of synergy. So let's say you're using Hubble tools or some other NFT tracking app, and you find something that you, you want to buy, but you don't have any mm -hmm. liquid stars. However, you do know that you have some like Atom staking rewards sitting there. Mm -hmm. Normally, you would probably like open up a new tab for Kepler wallet, claim your rewards, IBC them over to Osmosis. Um, and these are all different tabs. Do that swap. IBC them over to Stargaze. But what mm -hmm. if you could just stay on one page? So you have the little module that you found the NFT on. Then you scroll back up to the top of our dashboard. And you'll notice in that image that there's right sort of one large oh, module okay. at the top. Yeah. So that's like a custom transaction builder. So you could build out, claim Atom, send oh, to awesome. Osmosis, swap to Stars. And it's going to do kind of like what Rango does right now, where it'll just give you a pop up, a Kepler pop up for each step of that. But then once interchain accounts are enabled, it's literally one click. So you no longer have to kind of go to five different websites to get that NFT you just found. It's all right there at your fingertips. It's like actually oh, a command center. That's stupid, Timmy. That is freaking awesome. That is right? stupid awesome. <laughs> that is cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Like if Kepler were to integrate something like that, I can't even think about how huge it would be if the average yeah. user was just if see, like what I'm trying to do is make these chains feel more connected. Like yeah, both I, yeah, with the other yeah. sections. Yeah. With the other sections I haven't even touched on, but like the dashboard and just everything all together and with spark, the idea is to stop making cosmos seem like a bunch of different chains that are labeled as cosmos based and starting mm -hmm. to seem like a coherent ecosystem of chains that know how to organize themselves, provide information to users and let users flow between them with ease. I'm trying I'm trying to make this bigger. Oh, it's not happening. It's oh not yeah. Happening. I'm messing with it guys. That's that is so cool. That is, you know, you know what the nerdy part about that uh like I I like the way that you did this because I'm I'm such a boomer. I'm so old. This reminds me of like you you just basically gamified the chains. You ba like the, you basically just yep. hit 
the the nerdy like scr- like itch that I've always had when it comes to like doing all these. Let me go back down here and kind of like run through this again because this is very and, and you know you and I are very much into the cosmos ecosystem. But you're right, like going through all of these steps is very tedious just to like accomplish it's a annoying. small goal. Yeah, it's a anno- it's super annoying. But like now you 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 basically just gamified it for me where I could just come right here to interchain info. Go on to the dashboard to wherever section it's it's going to be listed on an interchain info, and literally almost play a freaking game and never see it's yeah. it's it's you're 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 kind of seeing under the hood, but you're not at the same time. I'm just clicking, dragging, and going, and kind of just like making a game of it all. And bada bing, bada boom, I'm there. Like I've accomplished my end goal. I've 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 I've, I've crossed all those hurdles without having to cross all those hurdles, and it made it a lot of, it made it a lot of fun while doing so. That's awesome. That's a really good idea. You know, it's me. hilarious. Uh, I actually just sent you another link too. You can pull up. What's hilarious sure. is that sort of benefit only revealed oh, itself to me like midway through building it. The initial benefit was actually not even about users that want to use all these different things, but users that didn't know they exist. So now if you scroll down on this example, you'll see an empty module in the bottom right. Oh, so <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. So you know, a, a new user comes to Cosmos, it's going to take them a month or two before they even discover Restake or Hubble tools exist. Mm-hmm. But what if, and you, I think you can click that. I don't know if I have it set up right. Click the plus. Can I actually, are you serious? Can I click this? I no. think. Click the the add new? Yeah. Nothing happened. Oh my gosh. That's, oh. stop it. Yeah. Now you're make, you're, so you're making me able to touch buttons. Don't, don't do that to me, Timmy. Now, now, now I'm getting even more bullish. I'm going to promote this right. all over the place. This is awesome. And so I'll say there'll be a couple cool features on the dashboard, for example, that are locked behind Spark points. Nothing mm-hmm. that is a core offering. We're not making anything paywalled, but like quality of life features and bonuses. So we are working towards integrating our Spark points, which you earn for donations, into the stuff that we will ultimately build. Man. Oh, and like, oh, Tank, you're going to love that one in the bottom left corner. So this is something that the Cleomedes team had the seed of an idea for. And then when I chatted with them about uh, the dashboard, they were like, oh my God, we should make it like an exclusive like dashboard module where basically you get that drop down arrow might work. Wait, this one, this one right here on the, yeah, does it not? No, no, no. So yeah, you'll, you'll be able to basically go through a whole bunch of parameters for everything from like, are they a relayer to, uh, how long have they been validating to where they are in the set, whatever, and get a filtered list of them. Like, how is that not already a thing? Bro, yeah, exactly right. How is that? I was just going to say that. How is that not already something that we can do on some of these wallets? <laughs> That's really freaking cool. I think you're short selling a 10K ask. I think you're you're really like, yeah, that that is for what you guys are trying to do here. And this is just one section, by the way, guys. I I definitely don't want to yeah. ignore everything else that Interchain Info is going to provide. But this is just one small section uh, that you can partake in in Interchain Info. I, man, that's a no-brainer, bro. That is when. So when are you going to put up these proposals? I I mean, I genuinely think this will like be one of the largest single benefits to all of Cosmos that there's been in a while, if we can get it right. Um, those proposals will probably be up within the next like week, two at most for some chains, if there's any weirdness. But yeah, uh-huh. in the near future here. Bro, I- I'm going to go. I'm going to be doing everything I possibly can to make sure that Interchain Info and when those proposals go up, get recognized and people fully understand them. If you and I need to actually go ham on doing Twitter spaces, doing yeah. videos, going live, like I think I am going to need this to. is cool. Yeah, no, this is cool, dude. Also, really nobody like is used to the spark funding method yet. Somebody commented somewhere today, like, are you guys actually a charity or is it just a gimmick? And I had to like explain, I was like, uh, what else would you have us call it other than a donation? Like if we're not promising you anything for it. Um, right. It, so yeah, no, I'm going to need to go ham on the communication and just sort of talk people through this and what's going on. Cause I feel like once people see the vision for interchain in particular, everybody's been like, holy shit. Yes. But it, yeah. it's kind of hard to get there. I think. 
Yeah, I think I think it is just, you know, just getting the word out there. I mean, I know you personally, we speak pretty much almost every day. Uh, so it's it's a, it's very easy for me to draw that conclusion and know, you know, the power behind what you're working and the, the potential benefit that it will give the greater cosmos. Like like you just said a minute ago, I, I now that I've seen this uh, and, you know, you showed it, you gave me a brief it was a while, was it maybe like what a month? It feels it feels like forever, but like months, it's been two months a ago. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little <laughs> But you kind of gave me a, a, a brief run through uh, a while ago about, you know, your, your thought process about it all. But now seeing this for the first time in its entirety, well, for what it is right now, I know it's not totally done, but for, for what you you know, you were trying to explain to me back then, this might actually be one of the most bullish and powerful things uh, that is going to help really interconnect the blockchain, like the, the internet of blockchains, like you know, we yep. talk about being uh, interoperable and we talk about this and that, but like this is bringing it to that level. This is actually bringing it to function. And I like, I'm in full support of this. This is awesome. This is like, so like maybe an analogy is like, this is the first internet browser. Like the mm -hmm. internet was a thing before the average person was able to effectively interact with it in one clean place with like, I don't know, Netscape. I don't know what the first browser was. This is something kind of like that. Like, I truly think Cosmos is at a fraction. It, it's crazy because I think this is so needed and so crucial and big that I constantly find it weird that I'm the one tackling it. I really do because, like, this I is don't. not just a small grassroots type of thing. I hate that, I hate that I'm thing. saying this, Timmy, but I don't think that it... I mean, I'm not going to get into this, but I don't... Because I understand <laughs> I'm a businessman, right? Like, I, I get business, um, and, and it's a double-edged sword, um, we have the greatest tech. I think we have the greatest opportunity being in the, in the cosmos ecosystem. Um, but you know, all protocols, like I won't get into this too deep, but, I, I, all protocols are for profit. All, um, entities yep. really are yep. for profit. I think that, and I think that is actually to kind of go back to, uh, the small criticism that you may have saw earlier today. Like you were saying, somebody asked, is this actually charitable? Uh, can you actually say it like that? I think that's why you actually get the kind of that pushback because people, I think whether they want to admit it or not, they know it for what it is. Uh, and so it is very um, hard for people to fathom somebody like you or I, that's really working towards chain agnostic kind of yeah. goals. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, I think why we, you and I very vibe a lot on, on, on different topics, because I think Spark IBC is one of the very few truly chain agnostic focused um i dare say companies or teams that are pushing towards things which i know you'll you're probably going to bring this like you said to fruition to be a legit um entity but uh i i really yeah. think that you know you're very you're you're very unique to me and spark ibc and the whole team that you have right now which i know is a small team um is very few and far between because a lot of people like to say that but in reality, all validators are for profit. All protocols are for profit. All yep. ideas are all individually for profit. So they're protecting their business, but it would behoove everybody. And I'll, I hope anybody that watches this, like take my word for it or not. I've been in business for many, many years. This is one of those things uh, that would like really benefit everybody to fund and get off the ground. Uh, like it, 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 the the with, idea with spark funny enough is that it's technically a donation because we're not promising anything but our sort mm -hmm. of hope or or soft guarantee is that anything we do a campaign for is something that if it succeeds will make your investments go up so like right. you are kind of investing in yourself and it is like not totally selfless to participate in spark ibc um you know we're never gonna just do like a I don't know. Like the way I hope people eventually come to think about it is Spark IBC helps to build and facilitate things that make all of the cosmos more valuable. So my contribution is really like me putting in a little bit of like booster fuel into this race car we're all riding together. Mm -hmm. Nope. I see. I see it the same way, to be honest with you. I very much see it the same way. Um, I'm not going to get into like my whole speech about why I do things the way I do things. It just goes back to that old saying, right? A rising tide raises all ships in the harbor. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think you're just trying to be, you know, you're, you're, you're a ship, like, let's not get that wrong, 
but you're also trying to rise that tide and, and not just do it individually where it's like your boat floats the highest. Like you really don't mind. And I, and I love that about Spark IBC and about you, Timmy, is, is like you don't mind rising along with everybody over time uh, because, again, you understand that fact that all tide, like a, a rising tide raises all ships. Um, Dude, I mean, just again, to like I stick with that analogy, because if, if you don't rise in that tide together, the only way you're getting up high is if you're on the crest of a wave that's going to crash any moment. Exactly. It, that, like. Good, good, good point there. Exactly. Yeah. Like I could, I could, you know, I could have spun something up in the Joe realm. That's like a one time kind of like, let's make me some money. Um, mm -hmm. But then where does that leave me? Right. Exactly. Like, where does that leave all of us? Where does that leave? I'm also just, as you know, so fucking at this point, like a very old head in crypto. So like a hundred percent at this point of my, no, okay. 99% of my interest in crypto doesn't come from money anymore. And I think that actually differentiates me from like probably most people, like even maybe yourself, mm -hmm. like, and I don't mm -hmm. say that because money is your only focus, not at all, but just you're, you're more in that realm than I am these days with like your streams that are technical analysis based. Like I used to be such a degen trader and it was all about getting rich. And then slowly it sunk in. I was like, wow, this is so much more important than any one person's finances. This is like mm -hmm. possibly the only chance I'm going to get in my lifetime to be part of like, uh, I don't use the word revolution, but an evolution this big of the way people interact with each other and the world around them. And like crypto is so, so much bigger. So yeah, yeah. short-term profits like don't interest me anymore <laughs> at you know, all. It's weirdly. really funny. I, I I will say because I I actually I, I I will admit, and I actually think you're absolutely right. I think you are a little bit more uh, definitely ahead even of even me. But like because I am an investor, I wear my investor hat. That's what got me into it all. But as I've been here and as I've been growing, I've been foregoing more and more and more opportunities because I'm it realizing changes. that for myself. It does. It it's really so does. weird. I like I I I know the change you're talking about. Where at first mm -hmm. you'd hear about some new shiny coin, and maybe you even were pretty confident, like, yeah, that's gonna pump for a day. I can make some money, even though I know it's gonna crash after. And over time, I just participated less and less, and like it was just less interesting. I was like, there's nothing here. I mean, I could make a quick buck, but I never am part of inside groups or like pump chats. So usually I'm the one that loses money, like in all reality. I think it's, it's about sustainability and like realizing that, you know, if you work towards true maintainability, sustainability and growth, that you're going to benefit for the long haul rather than short speculating on yeah. anything that might come across your way in the meantime. And I've, I've, I've really, it's Cosmos is, is very, very, unique uh in many many different ways but i think for the people that truly get it and like you know for whatever reason have found themselves venturing into the cosmos when they realize that like you and i it does it changes you and it really your your interest and and the things that used to interest you or might have like really got you excited don't get you excited as as, as much yeah. anymore and you're really working towards rising that tide not just for you but for all ships in that harbor because you think that it's more well, you know, I think you and I both, you know, we're convinced that it is more sustainable, more maintainable, it's more just, realistic long term. Yeah. From like a zoomed out view that's not even crypto specific, part of it is just like personally, I was lucky to be like, I don't know, maybe it's how my parents raised me or whatever, but to have foresight where I'm like, I would much rather build something that can pay me a salary indefinitely that I love doing than I would make three years' salary in like, a week's time span with some crazy yeah. trade or some weird crypto. There's a bunch of ways in crypto that can happen. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, then that five years is going to run out. Hopefully you can do it again. You probably can't. It's not really a more than once yeah. in a lifetime thing for most <laughs> people. So like even outside of specific crypto, I just would prefer to build some kind of business that can give me a comfortable salary and that I can be happy and passionate like working on. Yeah. And know that you're making a difference. Know that you're actually yeah. contributing to a long lasting change. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, the, I, the, I get it. The other thing that's hilarious because I didn't plan this at all, but the whole Joe thing recently 
it mm-hmm. it's gotten me thinking about the whole like average Joe side of things. And you know, earlier I mentioned, um, I, yeah, I'm surprised, or it feels weird that I'm doing this because it feels like such a big and important thing. Um, but the more I think about it, it's like. No, actually, it makes sense that an average Joe like me would be doing it because in Cosmos in particular, like you said, we have the best tech. And so what that usually means is all of the people with power, control, a big following who have built projects, whatever, they have actually like, and I do not mean this as a dig whatsoever, it makes sense. They've lost the perspective of the average Joe. So they, Mm -hmm. Sonny, Jake Hartnell, whoever else, people that I like, I chat with them. This is, again, not a dig at all. They probably don't see the value in this the way someone like yourself or a smaller new investor might, right? Um, yeah. It, they're more disconnected from understanding why this is needed and and how people are confused. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I, 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 I actually, you know me, I don't pull any punches or nothing that, but I, it's so funny that you brought this up. And I guess we're kind of rambling here. So guys, for anybody watching, forgive this all ties in directly into the importance of Spark IBC and uh, Interchain Info uh, to be exact. But, you know, I was talking um, late last night to somebody that I have a great relationship with, uh, you know, Jacob from Notional. And uh, we were talking, I believe, about uh, the Osmo uh, token. And uh, he was going on and on and on. Uh, you know, and I was trying to hear everybody's point of view because I tried to keep an open mind. Uh, but it, re- uh, it hit me that he was uh, talking about things in the perspective of a developer, from the perspective yeah. of, yep. of, of, of a validator and like something more than the regular retail Joe. And I was like, but you're not understanding the other like the normal people anymore you're you're just looking at it from your perspective which i get but yeah i i totally understand uh and again it's not it's not a dig at, at jacob or anything like that but it's funny that you brought that up because i had that same realization uh last night while talking yeah. with him um, and it makes no, total sense like mm-hmm. it's, it's it's not it's not even a character flaw it's totally normal that when you live in that world and your brain works that way and it's your day-to-day job that you sort of lose yeah. that perspective it just makes sense yeah. I love, I love though to kind of like uh, to not get totally off topic, topic, uh, and to ring it all back because um, I know we've been rambling for a little while. Um, yeah, so, I gotta run in like five, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's wrap this up. So again, interchain info and what Spark IBC's campaign has up right now, I think, is totally, totally awesome. It should be supportive. Um, give us the lowdown again. You have um, hopefully proposals going up on governance to help uh, hopefully get this off the ground and get funding uh, from several chains. Um, yep. Yeah. So I'll give the I'll give the little TLDR. So I guess yeah, the site has three sections to it: um, the mm-hmm. index, which is like a Wikipedia of the cosmos; the resources hub, which is a content aggregator for things like interviews, guides, um, Twitter, just anything like YouTube, Medium, uh, Twitch, etc. And then the dashboard, which already went over sort of in depth. Uh, We have built out the resource hub and the index. It needs a facelift with the UI, but the function is there. That's what we've been doing the past couple months. That's what's being beta tested. Um, Most of the talent on our team is Web2 focused, which is why we're focused on those two things. And so now that those two are ready, we're letting people take a look at it. We wanted to wait until we had something to show before we asked for money. Like, let's show we're actually committed to building. Um, And so a majority of the funds raised in this campaign will go towards building out the dashboard because we will need to hire on outside more Web3 specialized help. Right. Um, But so sometime around the end of the year here, we'll be going into an open beta where anyone can use the resource hub and index and start submitting content and articles and pages. And then sometime Q1 2023, we should have the first version of the dashboard out. At that point, we'll drop out of beta. It'll be a full release. The dashboard will be an ever-evolving thing. But honestly, we'll mm-hmm. probably release it as soon as we have like two modules ready. There's no real reason to wait. We can just add more modules over time. Um, but so that's sort of where we're at. We have lofty uh, funding goals, but also not lofty at all when you think of what other projects ask for for certain things. Um, and we're really hoping that the community, you know, including some of the bigger players, like I would like to see some sizable donations from some of the names we've mentioned here that we know are kind of bigger players and claim to support this kind of stuff. Um, but we are also realistic. So we're pursuing both grants and community pool funding. 
Um, and we're going to be super transparent about all that stuff. Um, and in the next week or so, too, we're going to be releasing some, just for those who care, outlines of like what we are promising. Should we hit 50,000 raised? And then what we would be promising and like timeline and stuff, should we hit 100,000? Timmy, let me, let me ask you, um, and this might not be a question that you can answer right away because I, I know you're pressed on time. Last question, though, for you, um, regardless with all of this stuff, let's just say the opportunity came around. Where, would you guys be open to a private investor approaching you guys to help build this out? Because there might be somebody we, we out there. We definitely wouldn't turn them the away by here. default. Yeah. We wouldn't I'm turn just them saying, away like, by This default. is very valuable. Yeah. I mean, it's something that like, I think what we're building is at the level where something like that would make sense. Um, mm -hmm. Like it, it would be helpful and it would, this is, I think blue chip and important enough that, you know, that would feel fitting. I personally would be very picky with who we worked with though. Um, just right. because not, not out of um, even my own personal righteousness or morals, but because um, you can click the little X, it'll close. Um, okay. <laughs> But because I genuinely think particularly what we are building with Interchain Info will benefit from not having any bias or people it's beholden to aside from the community. Like particularly gotcha. this, I don't want a VC investor to come in two years and say, hey, you know, I've recently been doing a lot of stuff with X Chain. Can we like prom promote them more across the website? You know, yeah, that sort of stuff. Or whatnot. that's harmful. Yeah. So we're definitely so like not opposed message, to private investors. But, uh, but I do like your message, though. I, and I do think, uh, again, I just want to wrap this up by saying, anybody watching this later, if you're on any one of those bigger teams or, or, or working on one of these protocols, I really do honestly think it would behoove you to at least consider it. Really, really talk it out with your teams uh, and, and think about community funding this because uh, like, I, I really do vibe with what you're saying about like you know making this more of a leveled, uh, effort uh, when it comes yeah. to community kind of like grass rooting this. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm not going to keep you because I know you got to run. Let's do more of these videos. Let's do a lot of live streams. Yes. Let's do a lot of spaces and, and get the word out there because I think this is we'll really also, cool, Timmy. We'll have like plenty of updates and stuff over time so we can do videos and like touch on those too when they release. So cool. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, because I think we have a lot more that we can talk about. But man, I appreciate yeah. you uh, giving us a sneak peek about this. Uh, I'm going to edit this, make it nice and pretty, and then uh, put it out there as soon as possible because I think people need to recognize the value that, you, that you're trying to build here for the entire Cosmos ecosystem, man. I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate you letting it's, us see it's, this. It's very much appreciated. Um, like, Honestly, if it weren't if it weren't for a couple people in the ecosystem like you and maybe 20 or so others that in my inception of these ideas were super supportive and like, whoa, there's actually something to it. I don't know if I would have pursued it this far. So I'm, I'm equally thankful to people like you. Oh, man, um, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did, though. Yeah, for sure. But okay. yeah, we'll definitely okay. be doing some more videos. Definitely. Also, uh, I'll join you for a live stream at some point. That'll be fun. Cool, 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 man. All right, man, I'll let you go. You have a good night. All right, Tank. Much appreciated, my man. We'll chat later. Later, brother.